The only way to get into the real estate market right now is to have a million dollars. What? Just kidding, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna tell you how you can get started real estate investing with just $15,000. That's the exact amount that I started with, and I started with high rates, which means you can too. If you don't know me, I'm Alejandro, I'm a real estate investor, and I own two house hacks. So let's get right into it. Now we're halfway through 2024, and if you haven't noticed, the real estate market has been very rough. Home sales are lower, inventory is higher, and there's just less buyers looking for homes. Given these circumstances, it's a little bit less obvious in how to get started. But as someone who's bought multiple homes at over 6% interest rates, it's definitely possible to get started from scratch today. And the biggest benefit is that there's a lot less competition right now. The two biggest roadblocks when it comes to getting started for newbies is knowledge. By far, that's the biggest one. A lot of people don't know where to start, what they're trying to do, or what they're even looking for. Number two is money. A lot of people think they need a massive bank account to get started in real estate, but that is just not true. So let's address the first one. Where do I get started? I would highly, highly recommend to go to a real estate meetup, local or state, wherever. Just meet as many people as possible and network with as many agents, investors, wholesalers, lenders as you can. These are people that are also looking to invest and you're going to meet veterans, newbies, and people that have done a few deals. You're going to be able to quickly get through your learning curve and find the types of people that you want to be, who you want to emulate, and the strategies that work with others. I'm assuming this is going to be your first house and you're probably going to be utilizing one out of two strategies. A house app where you rent out each room or the other unit or a live and flip where you live in the home, renovate it, flip it and sell it for a profit in a year or two. These are both great options to use a primary mortgage, which means less money down. After you've gone to your meetup and met many other people, you're going to want to talk to a lender. Lenders are pretty scary because, you know, they are talking to the banks, but they're usually really cool and they also work for free. You don't really pay them until the closing table. So talk to your lender. Tell them your income, your expenses, your debt obligations. You're going to show them a few of your tax statements as well. They're really just there to paint a picture so how big and how much home you can afford. Now, they're super helpful because after they pull your credit, after they run all this stuff, they're going to say a number. Let's say you can afford $250,000 and you want to buy a home around $300,000 for your strategy. What you're going to do is that you can then talk to the lender and say, hey, lender, what exactly do I have to do to get to this point? And they're going to say, maybe you need to bring in more money. Maybe you need to get a better job or pay off some debt. They're there to help you to get you to that point of what you want to go. They're usually not very good investment experts though, so don't really look at them for advice on what type of house you should buy, more just on the exact number side. After you've talked to your lender, you're going to want to talk to a few agents. I don't recommend that you look at the billboard of that big smile of that agent over there because he is not necessarily going to be a great investment agent. He's definitely pushing a lot of volume and working more with retail and family type situations. You're looking for an agent that can be specific to what your strategy is. This is why networking at the meetup for earlier is so important because you can find an agent that exactly does the niche that you want to do and preferably also invest in real estate. It's not really a good idea to talk to an agent or to work with an agent that doesn't invest at all. Since they're not, they don't really have any skin in the game, they may not know what they're talking about and may just want to get a commission out. So now you're your agent and your lender. You're almost there. Now you got to see and find a good deal. This is where you just need to get the practice in of underwriting. If you have an agent, having them give you access to the MLS. That is where you can go through as many numbers as you can, crunch them as you can, go to showings, bring your contractors, all that sort of stuff, just getting practice and knowing what type of neighborhoods you're looking for, getting used to the area. You really want to protect your investment because this is a lot of money that you're putting in the line. And especially as your first investment, first time investing in real estate from scratch, it's vital that you don't make a huge mistake because that scares off a lot of people in the long run. Now that you've analyzed a hundred deals, you've done all the work, you've collectively brought all these people together, it's time to really look at your profits. Depending on the strategy you choose, as with house hacking, you're going to want to find areas that have higher rents per room. I recommend that you go and look for room rentals in the area. Maybe go inside, act like a tenant, see what the amenities are, how often they're getting occupied. So you can have an idea of what is your vacancy and occupancy going to be like. Or if you're going to be doing a flip, go to the open houses that have the super nice, you know, granite countertop, beautiful marble, everything houses. You want to see what is going to be your competition and what are you trying to eventually exit out with the live and flip as well. I recommend that you try to find the ugliest, worst house in the nicest neighborhood. You want to have as much margin as possible when flipping. And that's easily done when you get the worst house. Whereas with the house hack, generally you want to, you know, find a house that is already kind of nice, clean it up a little bit, make it beautiful and rent it out and make some money. Last up is closing where you've done all your due diligence and now it's time for the lenders and the agents to do their magic, sign a lot of documents and you get your keys. This is when the real magic happens and you are now a certified real estate investor. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video really helps you on your journey to real estate investing. Be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification to get updated on new releases from Bigger Pockets. My name is Alejandro. You can find me at Bigger Pockets at Alejandro Yoon, and I hope to see you in the next one.